Our first interview up is with Aurelua Shimululeshi, and she speaks on the importance of investing in STEM-related areas and encouraging girls to embrace STEM. Women in technology, are you happy with numbers? <laughs> definitely not, definitely not, definitely not. I mean, there are not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of like hardcore data. Um, the data that, you know, um, we do have access to, NYSC compiles um, the numbers of graduates of different courses. And so the latest figures show that in terms of engineering technology graduates, women make up just about 20% of that. So imagine 20% of all the graduates in Nigeria from engineering and technology um, courses, just 20% of that are women. And then research shows that, you know, a lot of women are not going to practice. So either, you know, they manage, they struggle through the course, they graduate, I have my degree, great, I'm going off to do other things. Um, or they actually start their career and then within the first 10 years, a lot of women drop out for just different reasons. So you find in terms of women who are rising to the leadership positions, exec executive positions where they can actually, you know, make a difference, there are so few women in those spaces. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think, you know, our, also our, our culture has, you know, a big part to play in that. Women are raised, or girls basically are raised to be quiet, to be gentle, to be submissive. You know, that's the idea of, you know, oh, the perfect woman and the perfect wife of the future. You can't raise girls like that and then all of a sudden expect them to be women who are bold and, you know, out there. And, you know, to their credit, a lot of women are bold and a lot of women are achieving things. But I think there's still, you know, a cultural hang up that, you know, I shouldn't be out there too too much but what I try to say is that everyone has experience everyone has knowledge that is valid next is Tony Ogunlade head ICT at ideas Africa and he talks on some of the amazing solutions they've developed especially the channels TV TV now app do you think Nigerians can develop world-class solutions Fred, that's that's an interesting question you ask and I say it's interesting because I think um, the development community doesn't get the sort of attention I think they should have. Um, we have a lot of brilliant um, people in Nigeria. For as an example, my company, Ideas Africa, um, our team is completely local, and I dare say that we have created world-class applications. You know that have been acclaimed by those high up there. So yes, we we can have um, we can develop beautiful solutions. In Nigeria, youth can world class. Um, as a second example, I'll draw that from the kids you know, that were recognized recently in Silicon Valley. Those were secondary school children, children in secondary school. But they came up with a practical and beautiful solution. They came first in the competition. So I think we don't celebrate our own enough on this side of the world. We can definitely do a lot better than that. So share with us, um, what are the solutions you have created today? One of our most successful applications um, was one we did for Channel Television. Um, it's, it, till date, it's got over 2.5 million downloads in the store. And um, for an application that is news-based, I think that's, that's, that's truly a fit. Because um, you find out that the majority look for softer content. But for a news-based application, over 2 million installs, I mean, it's great. 2 million plus download is quite a lot. How do you ensure that such an app is free from bugs? How does it get developed? What happens behind the scene? In the development cycle, um, feedback is an important component. And it's a component a lot of people miss out on. So it's not enough to build an application and put it in the store. But, I mean, to be able to get feedback from the users, it's, I think it's the most important step in the development cycle because the customer or your audience is truly the king. When they give you honest and candid feedback through your store reviews or through the application um, feedback mechanism, we take, we take that feedback and we pass it to our development team who are able to turn that around you know, and make the overall ap application experience a lot better for the user. Our next guest is Amal Asan a female entrepreneur who believes Nigeria can become a global outsourcing destination and she has already started the process. The Indian outsourcing industry is reported to be worth over 150 billion US dollars. How can Nigeria take some of this market share? 
Yes, Nigeria can. Uh, why not Nigeria? We have better English speaking people. We speak with better accent. We have the same technology. We can use the same technology that the India is using. We have better timelines. So why not Nigeria? We have the talent. We have the people. We have the educated people. We can, Nigeria can actually do much more than India because we are in a better position than India to serve the international market. So what do you think is stopping us? Lack of initiative, one. Um, high capital intens intensive nature of setting up a business process outsourcing company. Um, lack of awareness, uh, just to name a few. Collins Onwegbu speaks on how to get more young people to embrace careers in technology so Nigeria can also supply the world with skilled technical labor in the nearest future. Today, a lot of young Nigerians are trying to build various enterprises and they're becoming startups. Uh, what is your opinion about everything that's happening? There's always been startups. Every generation has had a startup. Every company you see today started somewhere. When we, when we started this company, it was a startup. And then there was a startup culture, and a lot of us started rejected over time. A few fell, a few rise, a few just stay in the middle. Uh, we are romanticizing it these days because uh, globally the startup culture is improving, increasing. I think there's a tendency these days because there's funding at early stage, because there's uh, mentoring at early stage. The startups that are starting now uh, get more visibility, more attention, and when they do that, also more funding comes in, and so more of them will succeed, most likely. So it's good. I think it's a good thing. You mentioned funding. A lot of startups will say that's a major challenge for them. How do we bridge the gap? If you have a good product, funding is not a problem. There's funding available, but if it goes to those who, I don't want to use the word deserve it, those who have ideas and can execute and can make a return for the funder, the, the tendency is to think that funder is available for you to take, right? The, the challenge is that if I give you funding, I'm giving it to you because the money is not going to come back to me in multiples. That's the idea of funding. So when you wake up and say, I'm on funding, the first thing is to say, what am I going to return to the person who funds me? So money is available for those who are sure they will return something to the funder. But the truth of the matter is that, like in all things, there are a lot of business ideas that cannot return anything to the funder. So for this people, money will always be scarce. Finally, we have Uchena Onwa Megu Ugu, who led the Anambra School Girls that won the Technovision competition, which holds annually in San Francisco, USA. The girls were hungry for knowledge, you know, coming from the fact that everything I did with them was for the first time, you know. They, their coding was the first time everything entrepreneurship education was for the first time so we 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 wanted to learn so we wanted to learn first before thinking of winning so we were consciously making effort to absorb more knowledge before we remembered we were in a competition so we gathered more knowledge got so prepared and i think that prepared us for the um, competition you are the center of the whole thing, having coached the girls. Uh, do you think that government really took full advantage of the national stage and the recognition that came by what you guys achieved? No, I don't think they have taken advantage of the opportunity. I, um, I, what I expected to happen was to have a, a big uh, um, STEM center for the states in different senatorial zones so that we can be able to um, bring more girls to this, um, to this, not just the competition, but to this type of education. Bring not just the five girls, but we have more than 10,000 girls out there that is hungry for this kind of education. And the state would have made it more easier by you know, thinking of a STEM lab or thinking of um, training centers for us to reach more girls. From all of us at Channels Television, we say a happy new year. Thank you for staying with us all through 2018. We are sure you that we'll continue in a tradition of bringing you useful and timely information about technology trends, not just in Nigeria, but across the world. The idea is to help you take full advantage of technology. But that's our show for today. 
Remember, we we'll live on social media at Tech Trends TV. You can watch these and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, cfamedia.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukomeka Agbata. Thank <laughs> you.